Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is the next in a series looking at the construction of an extension. In the last video, we finished with the installation of the steel beam that you can see here. And in today's video, we'll show you the full construction of the roof itself on both sides of that beam, taking us all the way through to the insulation that we'll be installing for this roof. So that's basically what we'll look at today. Before we start, if you could give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already, that would be really appreciated, really helps us with the YouTube algorithm. So let's get started. So what we can see here is, as we discussed in the last video, the steel beam is supporting the mid part of the roof structure. And we're now installing new timber joists beyond that, which span from the beam itself through to the lintel at the far end of the extension that we discussed in the last video. So you can see that we've put four joists in and we've started putting the noggins in. So you can see at the far end above the lintel, the far two joists have cross, cross sections coming across them. And, and that's really to give the roof rigidity. So we're basically building a mirror image of what was on the other side. So looking back towards the house, this is a little bit later on the same day, you can see that we've now installed all of the new joists right the way across from the beam to this back section of the house here. We put some ply on just to keep it watertight and, and give us a level for that. So you can see we haven't put the bricks in yet in the lintel. So the front edge of the lintel, we still haven't inserted those bricks. And that's because we want to get all of this work done first and foremost. Get the joists in place, get the roof structure constructed as we need it to be and then we can finish off towards the end by putting in the bricks and making sure we've got the right levels and then we'll finish up with our guttering. Looking inside the property you can now see that we've stripped off the majority of the old extension roof so you can see that the joists on the left now don't have a covering on top of them so this is the reverse angle of that view so if you the front edge here you can see that we've still got some of the old roof and we've removed most of the old roof. So where we're looking here, this is looking up at what was previously the extension roof, the old extension roof. We've kept some of it in place because we're not putting the roof light in there. And then the front edge here is all new construction. So these are all brand new timbers going through to the end where we're going to have the sliding doors and we've got the old timbers. And you can see in the steel beam, we put some noggins in here in between each of the old rafters. So we're just making sure we've got the right spacings and that everything's strong and uh, isn't gonna move and give us any problems. So you can see the difference in the timber. This wood is a lot browner than the new timber because it hasn't aged yet, the new timber. Obviously the stuff that was in the old extension roof has been here for 10 or 15 years, so it's aged a little bit, but it's still solid. We checked it all out, it's fine. You, looking back towards the house now, you can see where we've checked out the hangings. So where the joists are connected to the house, we've actually uh, checked all these through and they're still solid and there's no movement there and at the right levels for us. So we are happy to carry on using them in the new structure. So we discussed it last time, but you can see the amount of disruption. There's absolutely no way the homeowner can use this part of the building anymore. So it does throw a lot of your house out of commission when you're doing this sort of work. So you need to take that into account when you're thinking about should I carry on living here or not. Jumping up onto the roof itself. So we've now got all of the timbers in place. So all of the joists are in place. So the next part of the job for us here is to construct the roof lights and then we can start putting the final finish onto the roof itself. Now the homeowner has changed their mind on the roof lights. So when we talked about it from the plans previously, there was going to be two roof lights, one across the new section and one across the old section. That's not the case anymore. They've decided to just have one roof light to keep the cost down. So that new roof light will be on the right hand side of the picture here. You can see there's a gap where we've started to construct the actual roof light itself. So that's the aperture that we will be creating for the roof light. What we're going to have to do is build it up. So we will be installing a purpose built roof light that we are making from glass. So essentially we will build up 
the four sides around that roof light and then we'll have a slope on that build up and we'll put a flat piece of double glazed glazing in and that's basically the best way of doing these these days you can get purpose built ones from velux and various other companies but we find that if you put one solid double glazed piece of glass in and, and finish it with some edging that it gives you a much better performance and it's one single pane so looking at that gap now you can see it much easier so we've constructed quite a big aperture so this is about two and a half meters in length by about a meter deep so it's quite a big aperture and that the idea behind that is to bring a lot of light not just into this part of the building but also into the section in the middle of the house where the kitchen is because what you find with an extension when you put a big roof on a property like this it can make the middle part of the old house quite dark because there's no light getting into that so if you put a roof light somewhere in the middle of your extension roof or this is towards the back of the extension then it will bring a lot more light into the whole house itself so just showing in a bit more detail here you can see a bit easier the uh, aperture that we've created so the plan for us now is to start constructing the actual uh, the sides of that it itself you can also see the hangers that we put onto the steel beam here which are supporting the weight of some of the joists and that's just really just to give it a bit of extra security make sure there's no issues going forward with any of this structure jumping forward a little you can now see the construction of the roof light itself is starting to take shape so we're building that up that will actually come out and will be a raised structure on top of the roof which will be set at an angle to make sure that the piece of glass that we put on the top is has got runoff and basically water runs off it and doesn't pool or sit on there and we're now starting to put the actual covering on the roof itself so this is going to be a warm deck roof so it'll be a warm roof so you've got the choice when you're constructing a roof like this of having either a cold deck roof or a warm deck roof cold deck roof basically means that the insulation goes inside the property so that the actual top of the roof itself is cold because all the heat from the house is kept within the house so if you touch the top of that roof it'd be cold that's that's in layman's terms a warm deck roof the insulation goes on top of the roof they're both fairly efficient the warm deck roof is probably more efficient because the insulation is a complete covering whereas with a cold deck roof you have to fit it in between the rafters so you have joists in there that means that there isn't a solid covering of insulation but the negative part of a warm deck roof is that you lose some height because if you've got a restriction on the total height of your of your roof itself and you have to include 150 mil of insulation on top of it then it means that your internal head height can be lower we've got plenty of internal head height here so we could afford to have the warm deck roof which as you'll see once we've completed it does mean that you've got a complete layer of insulation all the way across the top of the roof so it does make sure it'll be roasty toasty inside just looking at what's happening here we're literally just cutting all of the ply board out to size so this is being fitted on top of the joist so this is basically the start of our roof structure so we're just putting this down and then we'll have a membrane and the insulation and then the top layer and then the waterproofing will go on top of that so it's just a case of cutting these boards to size screwing them into place so that's key so you need to know where all of those rafters are underneath to make sure that you're fitting everything securely and that this is completely solid because this is obviously the substructure of our whole roof so we need to fit this down securely really tight make sure we've got the right fall that we've got a slight fall from back to front so that the water will run away from the house and that we can then have everything going towards the gutters. So this is a really important part of the job, getting the levels right. Now that we've done the initial ply board structure, it's a case of putting down some membrane and the insulation. So as I mentioned before, warm deck roof, this has got 150 mil of insulation. This is rigid form insulation. You can see we are fitting a complete barrier of insulation right the way across the whole roof here. So these come in large pieces, they're 2.4 meters long. So 
ideally you want to minimize the amount of cuts so get as many of the big pieces in as you can and then we'll be taping all of this together to give us a complete barrier so the idea is that this forms a really efficient layer of insulation on top of the roof and all of the heat and everything else inside the house is retained so it becomes thermally efficient and up to modern standards and, and will be the most efficient part of the house because the old house doesn't have any insulation in it so this new construction will be up to modern standards and fantastic so it's literally a case of just measuring all this out fitting it all to size cutting down each piece and going around things like the boiler flue that you can see in the bottom of the shot here the black pipe that's coming out from where the boiler is you can also see now the build-up that we've created for the roof light so you can see that that has been constructed up so it will sit proud of the rest of the roof it will actually protrude above the whole rest of the roof and we'll be fitting the glass on top of that at a later point so this relatively quick easy job with these boards this stuff's really light and easy to work with so you can just use a handsaw on this and just cut it loosely to size and basically get everything as snug as possible and really wedge all of this insulation into place so that there's no gaps so there's nowhere that the heat can escape from and as i said before we will be taping over the top of this to make sure everything is super tight and all packed in so that there's no chance of any heat escaping from this roof once it's fully constructed and then we've put the membranes and everything on top anyway so moving into the inside of the house looking up through the roof light you now start getting a feel as to what this will look like internally so you can see the build-up that we've created on the roof itself so as you look up towards the sky we'll have a single piece of glass so the view you can see there will be pretty similar to what you'll see when it's finished and then we will have the the nice insides which we'll finish off and that will be painted white and we'll give it and you can see the fall on that you can actually see the angle that we've put into that roof light just looking at it from the other side looking back towards the house you can get a feel for the scale of it it's quite a big roof light it's going to bring a lot of light into the whole of the building so not just in the extension but into the whole building itself and looking at the wood you can see everything's now all been finalized this is the underside of the ply board so there won't be any insulation going on this side we're having the warm deck all the insulations on the top so this will just have plasterboard on the underside of it and obviously we'll then plaster and paint that through so we're starting to see the construction taking shape now this whole six meter extension really starting to come to life We've got the big sliding doors at the end that's going to bring a lot of light in from that end of the building so it looks a bit dark at the moment but it's always the case before you've plastered and painted that it looks smaller and darker and then as you start to finish the work it starts to get brighter and bigger you can see the slope here you can actually see the angle that we've cut into that wood which will be when the glass goes on top of that that will then form the runoff that the water will automatically run off that roof and away from the building so looking at the finished roof structure now all the insulations in place everything's been fitted so you can see we've cut it around the boiler flue and the downpipe which is coming off the roof and obviously all around the new roof light structure so this roof is now done at this stage the next stage for us is obviously to make sure that this is all taped together and jointed and completely sealed and that there are no gaps and everything's nice and efficient and then we will start the construction of the top layer so we'll be putting on another layer of ply on top of this all the way across and then we'll be putting the waterproof coating on top once we've finished round the edges so thank you for watching please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already and we look forward to seeing you for the next video in this series.